Masechet Yoma, or on page 58, uh, where just starting off with the um, the mixing, uh, we finished with the curtain, right? The Kuen Gadol uh, sprinkled on the curtain, and now he's going to go to the Mizbach HaZahav. That's the small Mizbeach on the inside of the Kodesh, which is usually used for Ketoret. It's also called Mizbach HaKetoret. Um, before he does that, uh, before he sprinkles on it, first he's going to mix the two together. We saw yesterday that he doesn't sprinkle on his bach he doesn't sprinkle separately, pad and sayid, but mixes them both together. The way he mixes them together is he takes the the sayid, the, the pad and the sayid, pours one into one, and then pours it back into the other, so that it will be well mixed. All right, um, that we know that, but right now the Talmud doesn't quite know that yet, and so we're going to ask a question. Natan et barikan be'amine. Rami bar Chama merav chista. He niach mizrak betoch mizrak vekibel damo vekibel bo et adam mahu. And now we're talking about a general question, uh, not regarding Yom Kippur. Any time I do shechita an animal, one of the main avodot is I have to collect it in a bowl. Now the question is, what if I instead of taking one bowl, I take two bowls, I put one inside the other, right? Like uh, you know, bowls that fit in, fit fit inside each other and I do the Kabbalah with a bowl inside a bowl. Is that okay? Here's the two sides, min bimino chotzetz or eno chotzetz. Do I say, um, since it is min bimino, it's, it's the same thing. Let's say both bowls are made out of clay. So I'm putting clay inside clay. Do I say, even though they're made out of the same material, nevertheless, it's chotzetz? That's a general rule. I cannot have any chatzitza. There can, cannot be any separation between my hand, the Kohen's hand who's collecting it, and the bowl and the bowl and the blood that's going in, right? So if the Kohen, for example, is wearing a glove, no good, you can't wear a glove, it has to be no separation, you have to be holding the bowl. So a bowl within a bowl, maybe you'll say, that's an extra layer, no good, right? No extra layers. Or do you say, since it's all made out of clay, I can consider the bowl inside a bowl like it's all one bowl, it's all one together. And so therefore it's not considered a chatzitza. That's the two sides of the question. Why are we bring this here? because it's related to our, our Mishnah. Amaleh Oh, I have an answer from our Mishnah in Masechet Yoma. Natana Tamale Barekan. Since it says that when you're taking the two bowls of the pad and the sayir, right, and you pour one into the other, and then you take the male and you put it in the rekan. Now, right now we're assuming that means you take the entire bowl that's male and you put it in the rekan, bowl inside a bowl like that. And uh, it's allowed, right? So my love, Hoshi Mizrak Malele Toch Mizrak Rekan. Doesn't that mean that you take the full bowl and you put the whole bowl as is inside the empty bowl? And then we say, no, obviously that's not what it means. Law. Aira Mizrak Malele Toch Mizrak Rekan. It means that you pour the full one into the empty one, but you only uh, you, uh, and you, at any one time you only have one bowl, not two uh, stacked up with, with each other. Okay, this seems kind of obvious, but I guess it's a possible reading. Um, okay, now question on that reading. The step beforehand in the Mishnah, we already talked about a pouring. You take the the, the blood of the bowl and you pour it into the sayid, so it's already mixed. That's why maybe we thought that you take a full bowl and put it into an empty bowl. Why, if you already poured it in, so then you already poured it, what do you have to do anything else now? Why would you have to pour it back in? And the answer is, you pour it twice, this way and that way, so it really gets mixed up nice. If you only pour it once, maybe only the one of the pod will be on top, and then they're not mixed well. When you put a sprinkle it on the Mizbacha Ketodet, you're not getting all, all both of them. So you were mixing it well. Therefore, actually, we do not have an answer to our question. If in general, all year round, if I'm taking the, accepting the blood inside a bowl, inside another bowl, is it okay or not? So far, we don't have an answer, but we're going to try again. Tashema. Haya omed al gabe keli o al gabe regel havero pasul. The Kohen, Kohanim in the Bet HaMikdash would work barefoot. Uh, their feet have to be touching the floor of the uh, of the courtyard. Uh, what if he's standing on something, standing on a on a bowl, on a carpet, or if one kohen puts his feet on the on the on the feet of another kohen? Okay, it might seem a little strange, but actually this probably was very practical because the floor could be cold. Uh, in the winter. So in order not to be cold, maybe one Kohen will place his feet on top of another Kohen who has uh, thicker feet and is not so cold. So is that allowed? No, it's not allowed. Pasul. 
now. Um, so you can uh, pr bring a proof from here that, look, it's the same, it's min bimina, just like a bowl inside another bowl. This is also foot on top of a foot, they're both feet. And yet we say that foot and foot together, pasul, it's considered a chatzitsa, the separation between your foot and the floor is no good. So too, a bowl inside a bowl also would not be good. So is that a good proof? Well, not necessarily. A foot is different because it's not nullified, right? If I'm standing on someone's foot, maybe you're helping me out for a minute, but you're not going to walk around all day, all day long, right? And, and I'm walking on your feet. Uh, so therefore, you can't really say it's nullified. This is two different people's feet. Whereas for bowls, you can say, once I put one bowl in another, sometimes you have a double cup, right? When you buy a hot coffee, you use a double cup. And it's all considered one cup. They don't charge you extra for it. All right? I want to use them both together like it's one. So for a bowl, maybe in fact it is okay. And I can put them together. Uh, so that's one answer. Okay, that's all one version of the question. Um, here's another version of the same question. That, that we're not asking about chatzitza, but a little bit different. Is this the normal manner of service or is it not the normal manner of service? In general, when we're doing things at Bet HaMikdash, it should be done in a normal way. Is that considered a normal way to use two, two bowls, uh, one inside each other or not? This is and in, in Bemidbar, it says all of the vessels, kele, that's plural, hasharet, of service. That's singular. The word sharet is one service. So you see from here, shene kelim v'sherut ehat, that it does make sense to use two vessels for one service. It is possible. So therefore we learn that, yes, it is a normal way to do a service that you could use two bowls, even though it's only for one service, for one uh, purpose. And so we learn from there that yes, it's okay. Um, so you see here that really depending on how you ask the question, you'll get different answers, right? What's the issue? What's exactly the issue at hand? It, both are talking about a case of putting a bowl into a bowl. If it's a case of you're looking at looking at as a chatzitsa, then uh, we we don't have a conclusive answer. But if the question was asked in the sense of is this a normal way to to uh, do a service, we do have a proof that it is a normal way to do a service. So therefore, it's just fine. Okay, good. So that was one question. Now, second question. Okay, now instead of a bowl inside a bowl, we have a one bowl, and inside it we put a, a layer. Uh, the layer of sieve is bast, which comes from a, 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 a palm tree. Um, it's a very uh, thin uh, piece of uh, bark. And it's almost like a liner, like you might put tin foil or wax paper on a, on, a, an, on a tray. So you're doing something like this. The difference is that this bast is porous. Uh, so you're putting it on, but actually the, the water or liquid could get through it. So that's the question here. Mahu, min besheno min Maybe here you're going to say, you know, even if you said the previous one was okay because they're both made out of clay. In this one, one's made out of clay, one's made out of wood. Uh, and therefore, you might say it's a chatzitsa, it's no good, the blood has to go directly in. Or do you say it's not chotzetz because uh, it's, uh, it's porous. Since it's porous, do you say it's not, it doesn't, not in position, or maybe it's no different? So that's our second question. Uh, so maybe we can learn an answer from para uh, aduma. Regarding Paraduma says you have to go after you burn the ashes, you have to go get water. Mayim Hayim El Keli. You have to go to the river and get water, living water, and put it into a Kli. So that um, placing into a Kli is a separate mitzvah. Has to, and this has to go right into the bowl. Can't go through something else. And now, what if you had a sponge in that bowl for some reason? Uh, so the, this Baraita says it's okay. The sponge is not a problem, but just that we make sure when you're pouring it out, with the, uh, from the bowl, pour out as much as you can. When you get to the sponge, don't squeeze out the sponge. So any, any water that went into the sponge, that's no good, because now it went indirect in the, in the sponge. But the sponge being in the bowl 
itself is not a problem. So even though when I collected the water, the sponge was in it, because the sponge is porous, the sponge is not a hatsitsa. So to here, I could say that this bass that's inside the bowl is not a hatsitsa. So it would seem that that would be the same, and I could learn that's permitted. However, it's not exactly the same. Shane Maya uh, Water is different. We're going to put out the mom just collecting water. Water is very, very poor, very uh, liquidy. It goes through. Blood, however, is a little thicker. And blood may, may not go through the bast as easily as the water will go through the sponge. So not necessarily a proof. It might not be good. Or another another uh, answer. Um, another version of the answer is he said as follows: You know, for blood it's okay, but not for flour. Um, in other words, in the first answer we said water would be okay, but not blood. Or maybe you'd make the distinction between blood and water are fine because they are still liquidy and they will go through. But if you'd have to do kemisa, kemisa when you have a meal offering, you have to take some of the flour and put it into a bowl. That put placing it into a bowl is the same as kabbalah uh, for blood. And that's to be go, go into the bowl itself without any chatzitsa. Now flour is not gonna go through the bast of the tree. Uh, it's not liquidy at all. So that for sure is no good. But in this version, the, the uh, using this as a liner in the bowl would be fine for the blood. Okay, good. So those were uh, two interesting questions comparing lots of different cases. And now we get to the next part of the Mishnah, uh, which is actually placing it on the Mizbacha Ketoret. Okay, so this is how we learned it from Pasuk 18. The Kohen goes out. We're going to try to figure out what does this Pasuk mean? The Vyasa means he exits. Uh, where is the exit? So you, theoretically, you could read this that he leaves the Kodesh entirely and goes to the outside Mizbeach, the, the large Mizbeach. That's not what it means. And you know that because it says, Mizbeach Asher Lifnei Adonai has to be the one that's inside in the Kodesh. That's the one that's Lifnei Hashem. Bechi Ped Alav. And he's going to atone for it. That's both together. And he puts it all around on the corners, right? The Mizbeach would have uh, projections on each of the corner, as I'll show you in a picture soon. Uh, and he puts it all around. So from here, we learn that he has to go all around. So since it says, Shedifne Hashem, the Mishnah teaches, that's the Mizbach HaZahav, the one that's in the inside. When he places it on the corners, he should do it in a downward fashion, as in this picture. All right, it starts from the top and goes down. We're going to see we're concerned that his sleeves not get dirty. If it go up, then his sleeve might rub against the, the side of it. So over here, better to go down. And Mehechan uh, Now, what order does he do the corners? Uh, so we're going to have a couple of opinions. The first opinion is Tanakh Kama. Uh, it doesn't say who it is. The Gemara will see it's, it's, uh, that this, is, this follows, the Rabbi Yosef follows this opinion. It's the same as this opinion. So he starts off from Mizrahit Sefonit, from the northeast corner, and then Sefonit Maravit, then goes northwest, uh, Maravit Deromit, then goes southwest, Deromit Mizrahit, and then goes south. East. So he's going in a counterclockwise fashion. And from the place he starts, from the place he, uh, the place that he would start in general when he does uh, um, dabbings on the corners on the outside mizbeach, that's where he finishes uh, in the inside mizbeach. So let's see a picture of how this works. Okay, um, this uh, picture is facing west. In other words, it's facing the Kodesh, uh, face, facing the Kodesh Kodashim, right? The entrance, the, the, the uh, curtains to Kodesh Kodashim would be right in front. And the Kohen, if the, if the Kohen, let's say, is standing here. Um, actually, the Kohen, in this opinion, is actually walking around it. Um, uh, so he would walk here first. Um, this, this corner, and then go in a counterclockwise fashion all the way around. Um, so that's uh, starting in the northeast. Now, in general, on the outside, Mizbeach, because there's a ramp here, and then the ramp, he always goes, he goes up the right side of the ramp. He would go up, uh, let's, let's say, the lower area if he was dabbing on the corners. And if he went up here, he would uh, then make a right, 
uh, and then start off on this corner. And he would keep going counterclockwise to this corner, this corner, and this corner. So the point, the last point of the Mishnah that we read is that um, on the outside one, he ends on this corner. On the inside, Mizbech, he ends on this corner. On the outside, Mizbech, he actually starts on this corner and goes around. Good. That's all the first opinion. The Be'eliezer disagrees with the first, uh, with Tanakama on a couple of different uh, issues. Number one is that he would stand in his place. Uh, he wouldn't walk around as he was, you know, going this and then walk more and then take two steps and walk around this. It's a very small Mizbech. He could just stand in one place facing the Kodesh, Kodeshim and reach his hand over. Right, start. He would start here and reach and reach his hand over to get to the far ones. So that's the first thing he disagrees with. He also disagrees disagree with the direction up and down. He says for mo, for all of them, you go from down to up, except the one that's right near him. He goes from up to down. Uh, so whereas the first opinion said it always goes up to down, he says, no, the opposite. And the reason seems to be because um, if you're not walking or if you're walking around, uh, if you're walking around it, so then you can, uh, you can go um, uh, up to down. When you're standing in one place and you're reaching over, then it makes more sense to go from down to up, right? So you're reaching over, you reach, reach down and go up. That's fine. I mean, because it would be hard to do otherwise. The ones that are closer to you, if you would go down and then up, you see that it would be a very awkward position and your sleeve would get in the way and get dirty. So if you're standing right near it, it's much easier to go from up to down. Okay, so all these things are very practical. Um, and Vehiza al shel Mizbeach. Sheba pe'amim. Okay, now after that, according, now we're going back to all opinions. Uh, all opinions say after he does the corners, then he sprinkles seven times in the middle. He calls the middle tahorato, the pure part of the of the altar. What do you do with the leftover blood that's in the bowl? You take it outside to the outside mizbeach and you pour it on the western corner um, uh, uh, at the base. At the base, there was a hole there um, where you'd pour it in. Now, um, that, in general, when you have other korbanot and you have extra blood from korbanot that you gave, put the blood on the outside one, those you pour out the extra blood on the southern side. Once you pour them into those two, either of two, those two holes, they actually get mixed up in a canal that is runs under the Temple Mount, and they go out to Nachal Kidron. Here's Nachal Kidron. So he passes right next to the uh, the the Har Habayit. So there would be a a, system, a pipe system that would be uh, under the Mizbeach and would take out that blood out to the river. And then once it got to the river, it would get all mixed up and that someone could go down there and collect it and sell it to gardeners. And the gardeners would use it for fertilizer. Um, I guess it's good fertilizer, I don't know, blood, any parts of animal might be good fertilizer. Maybe in this case, it was uh, considered also uh, good luck. Like if you get a dollar from the Rebbe and you go start a business with it. Um, however, it has to be sold to them um, because otherwise it would be me'ila. This is this is um, these are this is substance that is owned by the Beta Mikdash, and you're not allowed to use it for pri- use it for private use, uh, private benefit. But if you buy it and then the, that money becomes kodesh, then the blood that comes out is uh, usable for yourself. Uh, and here we have a picture of the. Um, this is a picture of the seven uh, that go right on top, and then the blood gets poured out. Uh, so for the Bet Hamikdash, the one that the one for one one for um, uh, Yom Kippur, that would go on the western in the western hole. That's this one that's closest. Uh, the one all year round, any blood that you uh, dab outside, and there's extra goes on the southern hole. Here you can see it even better. Um, but these two holes uh, mixed together in the channel that goes underneath, and both go out to the to the river. 
All right. And that is the Mishnah. Make sure we finish. Yeah, we finished the Mishnah. Okay, so now the Gemara is going to go into a little further detail to Nora Banan. How come in the parasha uh, regarding Yom Kippur uh, says he has to go out to the Mizbeach? What do you mean go out to the Mizbeach? We already said he's not leaving the Kodesh to the outer Mizbeach. He's staying inside. So why you say out? Okay, so the reason why he says he has to leave, he's not leaving the Kodesh. He's just leaving the area that's between the Mizbeach and the Kodesh Kodeshim. Now, why would you think uh, otherwise? Because in the part of Shalkom uh, Mitzvot, if a Kohen Gadol makes a mistake all year round, he brings a pod for as a chatat. And it's an inner pod, means he has to bring the blood inside the Kodesh um, and sprinkles it on the curtain. Now, in that case, he would stand on the, he would stand next to the Mizbeach far from the curtain, opposite the curtain, and throw it over. I'll show you a diagram here, right? Here's the, here's the uh, parochet, and he has to get the blood onto the parochet. So uh, on, on Yom Kippur, he stands in this area, right? He stands right in front of it and sprinkles. But the one that the, the chatat of the, of the Kohen Gadol all year round, whenever he makes a mistake, that he does from out here. Here's the Mizbech, here's, here's the Mizbech HaZahav. He stands here where the number four is and he has to throw it all the way over here. Okay, it doesn't have to reach the Padochet. In, fa in fact, he's not supposed to uh, get stained the, 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 the curtain as we saw before, but it has to land somewhere near it. So since that, that's true all year round, I might have thought that in Yom Kippur, the same thing. After he does the inside, the Kodesh Kodeshim, and goes out, maybe he has to go all the way here behind the Mizbech and throw it. I might have thought that. So that's why the Pasu comes and says, Ve'yatsa. After he does that, he after he does the sprinkling on the curtain, then Ve'yatsa al-Mizbech, then he goes out to the other side of the Mizbech in order to sprinkle it on the Mizbech. So, so from there we learn that... Um, the steps go as follows. He's in Kodesh Kodashim, he sprinkles in there. He leaves there and goes to the middle section, turns around, sprinkles on the curtain. And then it says, Ve'yatsa. What do you mean, Ve'yatsa? It means that he leaves this middle area where the menorah is, Ve'yatsa, and he goes out here. Since he goes out there to sprinkle it on the Mizbach HaZahav, it must be before that, he was in the middle area to sprinkle it on the curtain. Okay. So that's what we learned from the word veyasa. He's not leaving out to the outdoors totally. Uh, good. We have another b'raita, which we learned the same thing, but we learned it from a different uh, pasuk. Tanya idach. Lifne Adonai. Um, this pasuk is, says in, is said in Vayikra Perek Dalid, different, right, and regarding a chatat offering. Because the one on Yom Kippur, when you're sprinkling it on the curtain, you stand right in front of the curtain, right in front of the Mizbacha Zahav. I might have thought that for the Shatat also you do the same thing. Therefore, the Pasuk back in Perek Dalit says um, the Mizbeach, Mizbach HaKetoret, which is before God. Mizbeach Lifna Adonai ve'en Kohen Lifna Adonai, emphasizing that the Mizbeach has to be the thing that's closest to God, meaning closest to the Kodesh Kodashim. So it's Mizbeach that's in front and not the Kohen. The Kohen stands behind it. Hakesad omed chutz lemizbeach umazeh. So therefore, we see that in general, all year round, other, uh, those the chatat of the kohen gadol, he's going to stand where the number four is. So it's the mizbeach that's near and not the kohen. So from here, we can learn that uh, all year round is different from the uh, from Yom Kippur. <clears throat> okay, so two two derivations, but they both agree. Okay, now we're going to get to um, a next uh, baraita that's going to elaborate on the directions of the four corners. 
ten or a banan. Hitchil mechate v'yored. Yored meaning he goes down from up to down on each of the corners. Mehechan hayamat chil. Which corner does he start with? Mikeden mizrachit deromit. From the southeast corner. Deromit maravit. Then the southwest. Maravit sefonit. Um, and then the northwest, and then Sefonit Mizrachit, and then the northeast, Ibre Rebi Akiva. This is different from what we said before. This is Rebi Akiva's opinion, and he actually goes clockwise. So here we have, right, before we said you start here and go around this way. Now Rebi Akiva says, no, no, you start here and go around clockwise this way. This is very interesting. We'll have to figure out why this is. And again, remember, this is this is facing west. The western wall would be over here. So facing west means facing the Kodesh Kodeshim. Okay, so uh, that's Rabbi Akiva. Starts uh, on the lower left and goes around clockwise. Whereas Rabbi Yosef Galili Omer, Mikeden Mizrachit Sefonit, Sefonit Maravit, Maravit, Romit, Romit, Mizrachit. Rabbi Yosef, that's the same as the Tanakama in the Mishnah. Actually, the only opinion in the Mishnah, because... Uh, uh, and the Mishnah only lists one, one set of directions. And uh, that one is this picture. You start from here and go counterclockwise. Okay, so you see that according to the B, you say you start here. According to the Be'akiba, you end here. According to the Be'akiba, you start here. According to the Be'akiba, you end here. Uh, and that's what the Mishnah says. This B'raita says, Makum shir Be'osei Gli Matchil, Sham Rabbi Akiba Posek. The place where the Rikiba starts from, that's the last stop, according to the B. Yose. Okay, so that's the two opinions. Um, and the Gemara is not going to fully explain why uh, they start on different sides. So uh, Rashid does explain it, however, as follows. If you remember on uh, previous stuff, we mentioned that there's two opinions about how many curtains there were, right? According to the majority opinion, there's two curtains. According to the Biyoseh, there's only one curtain, right? Now, if there are two curtains, then that means you come out on the southern side over here. Um, if you come out on the southern side, so two curtains, that would be the Biyakiva. He thinks there's two curtains. The Kuen Gadol leaves, comes from here, all right? And he does, he does whatever he does on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the curtain. And then he continues walking on this side. He's going to come to, right, the, as we're facing it, the left side of the Mizbacha Ketoret. So that's where he's starting from here. Whereas according to the Biyose, who says there's only one curtain, so that opening of the one curtain, curtain is on the northern side. And according to that, um, yeah, he turns around, sprinkles on the curtain, and then he keeps going and he's on this side. That's why he starts on the, here, the, the northern uh, side of the Mizbacha Ketoret. So that would explain why they start on different sides. Um, okay, now having explained that, the Gemara says, alma miha defaga beresha la avid. According to both of these opinions, however, he does not start with the corner that he first encounters. Since he's walking from the curtain area, he encounters first the western side, right? Um, and, but instead, both agree that he starts from the eastern corner, either, right, this corner or uh, according, uh, this corner or this corner. So why is that? Why is he starting with the corner that's closest to us and not the, and not the one that's closest to the curtain since that's where he's coming from? This is going back to the Pasuk that we started with in, the, in this Gemara. He has to leave Right, he has to leave to the Mizbeach. Leave means he has to leave uh, the, the area. Leaving the area, right, is going from here. He was in this area. To leave this area, he has to go to the area of number four, right, the area that's farther away from the curtain, the other side of the of Mizbacha, of the Mizbacha Zahav. So since he has to go all the way out first, and then he can start, right, like um, uh, in basketball, you got to take the basket basketball back, Right behind the line, right, and then you can only only then you can approach again. So they have deal, of course. Um, okay, so everybody agrees because you have to leave first. Now, Rabbi Akiva Nakif Derech Yamin. According to Rabbi Akiva, how come you don't turn to the right? To the right means counterclockwise. Um, even though when you're going counterclockwise, you're turning left. It's making four lefts. But we're not thinking of it that way. We're thinking of it as you're facing this, this Mizbeach. If you're facing the Mizbeach, 
then you always want to move to the right, right? If you move to the right, uh, to the right, to the right, that's counterclockwise. So in general, it's good to move to the right. The right's always better. Um, so according to the Be'akiba, how come you don't go counterclockwise? Why are you saying you start on the lower left and you go clockwise? Uh, so, and that's what we do, by the way, in the outside Mizbeach. Outside Mizbeach, we always go counterclockwise. So it's a real question to the Be'akiva. Why are you doing that? So, we're going to give like four different answers to this. So, um, perhaps they're disagreeing with the statement of Rami uh, What did he say? Shalom built a big uh, basin, a pool basin, right? Gigantic one. Um, and it was a big basin that was standing on, sitting on uh, 12, uh, uh, 12 um, uh, 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 bulls, not real bull, uh, 12 uh, uh, bulls made out, of, um, made out of clay, right? It was uh, this big, huge structure. So now in the, the Pasuk in Divan Amim, describing the bulls, says that they're each facing different ways, different directions. Now look at the, how the Pasuk describes the directions. Look at the order. Omed al shenem asar bakar. Shelosha ponim safona. Three of them were facing north. Yama, and three of them were facing towards the Yam, towards the west. So you see, we're going from north to west. So you already see we're going from counterclockwise. And the other three were south. And then east, and the big basin was on top, and their backs were towards the um, the, the middle. So the fronts of the animals were facing out. So you see here that you go um, counterclockwise. Uh, so now we learn that you should always go counterclockwise, which means to the east. Why is he saying it means to the east? Because he's uh, this, this uh, source is assuming that you're on the Mizbeach outside. When you're on the Mizbeach outside, you walk up the ramp. Right when you walk up the ramp, then you make a right to go to to eat to the east. Right, so that's why it says to the east. <clears throat> this is the eastern side. Um, okay, good. So that's what Ami Bar Yecheskel said, and so perhaps uh, Rabbi Akiba disagrees with Rami Bar Yecheskel. He says, "Oh, very nice. Uh, that's a nice pasuk in Divrei Amim talking about the basin, uh, the wash basin." But okay, it has nothing to do with me. I don't have to agree with that. I don't think that the Mizbeach has to always be the same way that wash basin, basin is described. So maybe he disagrees with it. No. No, it doesn't make sense to say the Bekiva would disagree with them because the truth is that everyone agrees that on the outside Mizbeach, you should go counterclockwise. So instead, we can refine it better and say, um, that they disagree on whether the inside is like the outside. According to uh, the Biyasei Galidi, so it's just like on the outside you go counterclockwise, so to the inside Mizbech, you should go counterclockwise. It should be the same. And the Biyakiba says, not necessarily. I agree with you that you should learn from Rami Bechazkel regarding the outside, you go counterclockwise, but the inside, one is different, and I should go clockwise on the inside. Okay, so that's one possible answer. Fine, but a problem with that, with that, that answer. Fine, according to the Be'akiva, you're telling me that you're not going to learn the inside from the outside. So fine, if you're not going to, even if you're not going to learn it, so why not do whatever you want? Go clockwise or counterclockwise. Why are you saying precisely the opposite, that you have to go clockwise? So you need, you need a better answer than that. Uh, Mad, you know, we we all you you, you, all, you all explained why you don't have to go counterclockwise, but why would you go and go out of your way and be be different and go clockwise? So Rabbi Akiva could tell you, Medina ba'hu keren defaga beresha ba'hu aved beresha. The Mad Shakish ve'en ma'abirin al hamisvot al hamisvot. So Rabbi Akiva says because the truth is that when I was coming walking from the area of the curtain. I really should have, let me get a good picture. Yeah, when I was walking from the area of the curtain, according to Be'akiba, right, there's two curtains. So I was walking from here and I, was, I did that, I sprinkled on the curtain, I was walking here. Really, I should have sprinkled on the one that was closest uh, to me, which is the here, the north, um, the north uh, west, 
Uh, but because of the other pasuk that says I have to leave this whole area and come here, so it's fine. I do on the one that's closest to me first. So I did that one first, but now I just passed by the, the, this one that's closer to the, to the curtain and was not so nice for me to pass by it. Um, uh, so therefore, even if I can't do it first, I should at least do it second, okay? So the priority is to leave the area. Fine, I'm in this area, I do this one first. But now you want me to go counterclockwise and do that one last? No, it's not proper, not nice, right? I passed it by, let me go back to it immediately. So that's why I do this one first. Second one, the one that I passed by, and now I'm already going clockwise. So I continue going clockwise. That explains the Akiva's direction. <clears throat> Okay. Is further explaining what I just said. Why doesn't he do, in fact, that one first, the one that he first encounters? Because he has to leave the area. And once he does what he has to, the, the one that's closest to the to, to the one that's farther from the curtain, then he goes back and does the one that's closest to the curtain, which he passed by. All right, so that's all a good answer. Um, I'm just going to go a little further so we can finish this topic. Yet another answer. Or you could say as follows, if I was walking around physically with my body, right, and we saw, uh, according to Tanakama, he sprinkles on one corner, then walk, takes two steps, sprinkles on the next corner, and the coin is actually turning around. If that's the case, then yes, everybody would agree that you go counterclockwise because um, you learn it from the outside. On the outside, Mizbech is huge. Of course, there you have to walk around. So if you're walking around, then it would be the same counterclockwise. And here, it would be to be or say, the English translation is wrong here. Uh, it would be to be or say that would say, uh, I'm sorry, this, the English is correct here. Uh, it's, it's wrong up here. Uh, the English is correct. So more savar, Rabbi Akiva is one that would say the, on the inside one, I'm only using my hand. Since I'm only using my hand, meaning I'm stretching out and doing it this way. So I don't, I'm not walking around. So therefore I can go clockwise. According to the Biose, I'm actually walking around physically, just like I'm doing the one on the outside. So therefore I should walk around counterclockwise like the outside one. Uh, good. That's a good answer. Another answer. Maybe everybody agrees that the quen stands in one place and only stretches out his hand when he's doing it around. Um, and this is what they disagree with. Um, one says, we can learn yad from regel. This is the English is wrong here. It's the biose that says, I can learn the hand from the regel. Just like when I'm walking around on the one outside, I walk around counterclockwise. So too, when I use my hand and reach over, also counterclockwise. Whereas Rebbe Akiva says, no, if I'm walking around, I agree with you on the outside one counterclockwise. But here I'm using my hand. It's a different thing altogether. So I can go clockwise. We reject this answer. Does Rebbe really really think that you can use your, uh, they can use your hand. Remember back in our Mishnah, the second opinion says you stand in one place and you, and you reach your hand over. So therefore we can infer that Tanakama, who was unnamed in our Mishnah, thinks that you don't reach over, but you actually walk around. Um, and the Tanakama there is the same as Rabbi Yose uh, Hagalili. So therefore, so we forget this answer here. We'll uh, revert back to our previous answer that one thinks uh, that you actually uh, walk around, that's the Biyose, and one thinks that you use your hand, that would be to be Akiva. Or uh, last answer, or you can say as follows. The word saviv, it says the word saviv here in our pasuk regarding the inside mizbeach, and it says the word saviv also regarding the outside mizbeach. So 
Um, uh, so Rabbi uh, so Yosef would say, it's the same thing. It says Saviv here, it says Saviv there. So just like it's counterclockwise outside, so too it's going to be counterclockwise inside. And the other says, the entire inside Mizbeach is all as big as our one corner of the outside Mizbeach, right? I mean, it's, the outside Mizbeach is huge. One corner is like an amah by, by, by an amah. The inside Mizbeach is only an amah by, by an amah. So just like when I am outside and for each corner, I'm standing in one place and putting it on that corner, then I move to the next one, but I stand in one place when I stand put on each corner. So too, um, I should stand in one place um, when I'm inside, since the whole thing is like one corner, I stand in one place and put it on all of the corners. Good. Tanya, Amar Ishmael, Shnei Kolim Gedolim Nishtairu B'Makom Rishon. Ze Omer. Okay, this goes on to the next topic. We'll end here. Baruch Adonai Amen. Ve'amen.